the sorting that we're talking about, the, 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 the two parties becoming more internally homogeneous in terms of ideology and more different from one another, had, had roots in the electorate. Uh, that is, things that were happening out, out in the electorate. The, uh, one of the most important things was, uh, and the, the, the source of uh, this, this paper I wrote, uh, and that is what was happening in the South, that, that the South had been, because of the legacy of the Civil War, a almost completely democratic region in the country. Uh, the uh, Democratic Party carried the South in uh, uh, every presidential race. Um, uh, almost every member of the House of Representatives, I think in, in 1952, there were six Republicans and 100 Democrats or something like that in, fr from, in the House from the South. Um, from, uh, from the end of Reconstruction until 1961, uh, not a single Republican was ever elected to the U.S. Senate. So that's about as dominant as you can get. And then during this period, during the 1960s, 1970s, um, this started to change. And the South began to move away from the Democratic Party um, in presidential elections to, to uh, independent candidates like George Wallace and then to Republicans like Richard Nixon. Uh, uh, 1972, Nixon carried every southern state. Um, and, and so this realignment of the South had implications for the kinds of delegations that existed in the two parties in, in the Congress. That uh, Southerners, first of all, became a smaller portion of the Democratic Party in both chambers, uh, and therefore less influential from that point of view. And the, the Southerners that were still Democrats, they began to change. Um, uh, blacks began to be elected to Congress from the South, all, all Democrats. Um, uh, the white Southerners who were Democrats became more moderate and then liberal. Uh, um, and so the Southerners, in the Democratic Party had been a very conservative bloc before the realignment, a very conservative bloc at loggerheads with the liberal Democrats from the North. Um, uh, during, through the realignment, these two groups, Southern Democrats and Northern Democrats, became more and more similar to one another, therefore less internal division within the Democratic Party, and therefore more willingness to make their party leaders more potent and, and capable via the reforms. And then the Republican Party, there, there was no Southern wing before the realignment. There were, there were virtually no Southerners. Um, um, as Southerners began to be elected to Congress as Republicans, um, they came in as extremely conservative Republicans over on the far right of the Republican Party. And so that moved the Republican Party in Congress to the right and made it more homogeneously conservative. And, uh, so, so those electoral forces were, um, uh, were the driving force behind uh, this change in the makeup of the party coalitions in the House and Senate, uh, which were in turn the basis for the reforms that, that we talked about. Uh, parallel kinds of things happened in the North, too, but later. 